Member for St. John South, Mount Pearl. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand in the House today in opposition to Bill C-10, the Omnibus Crime Bill. As I stated in the September speech in this House, I do not stand in opposition to every part of the bill. Indeed, some parts of Bill C-10 are worthwhile. As a father, Mr. Speaker, I have no objection with protecting children against pedophiles and sexual predators. Of course not even though the Conservative government would have you believe otherwise. But then that's the rub with Bill C-10, which throws so many pieces of legislation, nine bills, aboard the one bus, aboard the one omnibus bill. I may agree with coming down hard on pedophiles, but what I don't agree with, but I don't agree with filling prisons with people who probably shouldn't be there, like the student who gets caught with six marijuana plants. What will throwing that student in jail do for him or her or for society in general, besides costing us a fortune in new human cages? My answer, Mr. Speaker, is nothing. It will do absolutely nothing. Steve Sullivan, an advocate for victims of crime for almost two decades, wrote a piece earlier this month for the National Post, and a particular quote stuck with me. Quote, Few of us lose sleep over child sex offenders spending more time in prison, but some of the reforms will toughen the sentences for low-risk offenders with low risks of reoffending. They won't, they won't make children safer, but will cost five times more than was being invested in child advo advocacy centers that support abused children." End of quote. Bill C-10 is also known as the Safe Streets and Communities Act. But mandatory minimum sentences aren't so much tough on crime as tough on Canadians suffering from mental illness, addictions, and poverty. In fact, poverty will be punished even more than it is now. The bill targets youth for, har for harsher punishments and will put more Aboriginal people in prison. One of the pillars of the Omnibus Crime Bill are mandatory minimum sentences. The Conservative Omnibus Bill will dramat dramatically expand mandatory minimum sentences, limiting judicial discretion to levels unseen before. Experts say taking away discretion from judges clogs up the judicial system. That's not all that it will clog up. The provinces are practically rebelling against this new crime bill. They charge it will clog up the prison system. The provinces say it will put increasing pressure on a prison sy system that is pra practically busting at the seams. Experts say the omnibus crime bill will increase the, the country's prison population by untold thousands. As for the cost of housing that many more inmates, estimates, estimates range up to $5 billion a year. That's more than double the current expenditures for the corrections system alone. And that's a conservative estimate. Not a Conservative government estimate, mind you. The Conservative government hasn't put a price on the omnibus crime bill, which makes no sense. On Monday, yesterday, I stood in this House and debated the bill, debated the bill to kill the Canadian Wheat Board, which ended up passing even though the Conservative government failed to carry out a cost-benefit analysis. How is that good governance, good fiscal govern governance in these scary, unpredictable times? I don't get it. Canadians don't get it. Ontario Premier Dal Dalton McGuinty has warned the Conservative government that provinces across the country will not pick up the tab for any new costs associated with the omnibus crime bill. Quebec has essentially said the same thing. In my home province of Newfoundland and Labrador, the main prison is Her Majesty's Penitentiary in my riding of St. John's South Mount Pearl. Her Majesty's Pen dates back, it dates back to Victorian times. The original stone building first opened in 1859. The pen, the pen is an aging fortress that has been called an appalling throwback to 19th century justice, which sounds like Bill C-10. Felix Collins, the Justice Minister for Newfoundland and Labrador, the progressive conservative Justice Minister for Newfoundland and Labrador, I might add, 
has had this to say about the omnibus crime bill. I'll quote him. Most groups, most experts, and most witnesses who have given presentations on this bill would advocate that the federal government is proceeding in the wrong direction and that this procedure has been tried in other areas and has proven to be a failure. Incarcerating more people is not the answer. End of quote. That quote pretty well sums it up. Let me say it again for effect to hammer home the point. Most groups, most experts, and most witnesses who have given presentations on this bill would advocate that the federal government is proceeding in the wrong direction and that this procedure has been tried in other areas before and has proven to be a failure. Incarcerating more people is not the answer. When Felix Collins, Newfoundland and Labrador's Justice Minister, speaks about the procedure being tried in other jurisdictions and failing in other jurisdictions, he's probably talking about Texas. Conservative Texas has warned us not to follow a, fail, a, a failed fill-in-the-prison approach to justice. And the Canadian Bar Association, representing 37,000 Canadian legal profession, professionals, has said that the bill would, quote, move Canada along a road that has failed in other countries at a great expense. The, the Vancouver Sun ran a story Monday, yesterday, headlined, Conservative Crime Bill is a Costly Mistake for Canada. The story reads, when Canada has some of the safest streets and communities in the world and a declining crime rate, why is the Prime Minister pushing his omnibus crime bill in such a Machiavellian way? Many jurisdictions, including Texas and California, have warned this crime agenda not only doesn't work, but it doesn't make economic sense. Costing roughly $100,000 per year to incar incarcerate a person, mandatory sentences will raise taxes, increase debt, or force or force us to cut spending on essential programs like health and education. C Bill C-10 arrogantly ignores proven facts from decades of research and experience. End of quote. Again, that about sums it up. Here's a quote from a constituent that I received. Who is helped by having a student, a future doctor or engineer, thrown in jail for a year and a half because they decided to make some hash for their own personal use. In what universe does that make sense? Stop wasting money on cages and start spending it on hospital beds and textbooks. Now that's a line that sticks, Mr. Speaker. Stop wasting money on cages and start spending it on hospital beds and textbooks. If the omnibus crime bill goes through, provinces like Newfoundland and Labrador will have less money, less money to spend on health and education, let alone rehabilitation and preventative programs. Let me quote from an editorial in the St. John's Telegram, the daily newspaper where I come from. Quote, the provinces have been raising two kinds of concerns. One is that tough on, crimes law, tough on crime laws don't actually achieve their stated ends because rehabilitation actually decreases crime rates in the way that longer incarceration does not. The second concern is far more pragmatic. While the federal government is making laws to extend prison terms, it doesn't seem to be in any rush to help with the additional anticipated provincial costs connected to longer sentences and increased court time. Increased court time, listen to this, because it will be less attractive to criminals to plead guilty at the early stage of prosecution. That's from the St. John's Telegram. Who's going to say, yes, I'm guilty, if they know that mandatory minimum means they will definitely be going to prison? Mr. Speaker, I say Bill C-10 will not make Canada a better place to live. It will change Canada. It will change how we see ourselves as Newfoundlanders and Labradorians and Canadians and how we're seen on the world stage. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.